To begin, we need to create a camera. This camera will be the one that we render from. So it will give us the view of our animation exactly how we want it to appear in the composite. So from the menu, select Create, Cameras, and Camera. A camera will appear at the origin in your scene. To look through this camera, ensure it's selected, and then from the smaller menu inside your view, select Panels, and Look Through Selected. This will give you the view exactly as though you're looking through that camera and it will be the one that is rendered out. We'll now add the video into our scene to be used as a reference for the animation. So by looking through camera one, we're going to go view, image plane, import movie. Then locate the movie file. And open it. It will load into Maya and appear as the background for camera one. You can tell which camera you're looking through as it will say in the very center at the bottom in small, almost difficult to read writing um, green camera one. If you change to the perspective camera, it will say persp down here. Now you can change cameras by pressing the space bar very quickly. It'll give you your other options here. It gives you four options in this case. Uh, we could go to the front camera, click, and then press the space bar quickly. And if you scroll out in this front view, you can see your camera one, which is this little one here, and you'll see that image plane in the background. And we might come back to this front camera at another point um, to take advantage of it. So just for now, let's switch back to camera one. Okay, in this view, we have our ground grid, which is currently going horizontally across the screen. We want to use that as a ground in our scene and we want to orientate it to about the same perspective view as the ground shown in the video. So something you know like about there. Now you can move this around by holding down the alt key and using the left mouse button um, and you can also move it up and down on a Mac, it's a three button click, and on Windows, it's the middle scroll button. If your computer is configured differently, you might have to uh, check on how to move the plane around. Though I'm assuming if you're at this point in using Maya, you already know how to do that. So this ground here is now aligned with the one that is in the video. We'll now bring our model into the scene. So file, import, and it's going to be an FBX model. So you want to set this file type to FBX and then find your model. And select to import it. Okay, when it's finished, you might not see the model, but if we scroll out in this view, you'll start to see the model's foot. And if you keep scrolling, you'll notice that it goes through that image plane. So this model is absolutely huge. It's already animated and we don't want to play around with scaling it because we do not want to mess up the animations. So in this case, we need to move this image plane further back so the model does not get occluded by it. So switch back, space bar to the front view, and select your image plane. When it's selected, you should see it with a yellow border around it. 
Now that it's selected, we want to look at its attributes in the attribute editor, which is this icon. You can turn that on and off. And scroll down until you find the depth, which is just here in the placement section. Now this depth is currently 100 and it's way too close to the camera to be playing around with such a large model. So let's set it to 1000, which will push it right back. Now you won't see any change in this front view. Let's switch back to camera one. And if we now scroll out like this so that we can see our entire model, she's not being occluded anymore, which is what we want. So this image plane will still look the same inside of camera one, but it's now further back. At this point, we've messed up all our good work with aligning the ground plane to the video, which we need to do again. Our model is going to run from this side of the video across to this side. So we need to orientate her to be facing in this direction. Do not select anything in the scene. And then you can orientate your camera using the Alt key and the left mouse button as before. Now you want to align her up so that she's in the same perspective view as the camera's video. This grid will help you. It's now become extremely small. So let's just change it so it's bigger and it will help you line up with the background. So uh, we want to just click on display, grid, and the little box next to grid and change the size of your grid to say 1200, which is probably enormous, and 50 for your grid lines. Apply that and then close the view and you'll see you've got a very nice big grid. This model is positioned in the origin of the grid. So when she runs across the screen, she's going to run along this black line. So that will be the path that she takes. So we want to reorientate this ground again. Remember, use the Alt key and the left mouse button. You do not want to have anything in the scene selected because we're not moving the objects in the scene. We're just orientating the camera view. And move her down so that she's gonna run across here behind this couple and then in front of this bush that's here. Now, if you want to see her textures, don't forget that you can click on the little button at the top here that has the checkerboard on it. And you'll see that she's fully textured for us to work with. So far, we haven't even looked at the video or the animation in our model. And we can do this by scrubbing the timeline. So if you scrub along through these frames, you'll notice that the model's running cycle is working, but you'll also notice that the background video plays for each frame. This video is 13 seconds long, so at 24 frames per second, we should make our timeline 312 frames. And we want to be looking at uh, more than 24 frames, so it takes the model about 40 frames to get from one side of the scene to the other. So let's Set it at 60 so we can see the first 60 frames. And then we can scrub through here and you'll see the video playing for the 60 frames. But notice what is happening with the model. She only runs to about frame 14 and then she stops. Now that's because the animator created this running cycle, which is loopable, but currently it's not set to loop. So you can't see that effect. To make her continually run for our entire sequence, we need to set her to loop infinitely. And we can do that easily in Maya. We don't have to copy and paste all of the keyframes to keep her moving. It's just a simple matter of selecting a few menu options. 
So we're going to select our model at this point. Now there's a lot of different parts on this model that can be selected and you don't want to accidentally select the wrong part to animate. We need to animate everything. So from window, let's go to the outliner, which will give us a good view of all of the components of our model. Now there's a hips element, which is the top of the hierarchy for our model. And that's the one we want to select. Now, in order to cycle her animation, we need to go to the graph editor. So that's window, animation editors, graph editor. When this comes up, you can see the curves for the model, but not all the curves. So when she's running, there's her arms, there's her legs, knees, head, torso, everything is moving. There's not enough showing here. So they obviously haven't been selected. We need to select everything. So hold down the shift key and select the plus button next to hips. That will select all of the components that are animated in our model. And in this view, if we hit F, we can now get a better view of all of those curves. Now we don't have to play around with any of these individually to get it to cycle. Simply select all of them, drag the mouse around, and then from the graph editor menu, select curves, post infinity, cycle. Now, if we just put the graph editor out of the road for a moment, we'll come back to that and go to our animation and scrub through the timeline. Watch what happens as you continue. She's going to run forever. So if the entire length, which is exactly what we want.